Mayor Scott says his administration is working to transform the Baltimore Police Department. Today's move to change the police district is just a number of public safety changes made recently. Despite these changes, though, homicides and shootings are not slowing down. And with two months left in the year, Baltimore is on pace to see 300 people killed for an eighth straight year. Fox 45 News has team coverage tonight. Let's begin with Jeff Abel and the City Council hearing today on a crime fighting plan that hinges on a strategy that did not work in prior attempts. Well, the council took a hard look today at the city's new group violence reduction strategy, a strategy that has failed twice before, but one the mayor insists will cut crime this time. It was the first of the year when city leaders unleashed their newest crime fighting strategy in the city's western district, a strategy aimed not at jailing those in the criminal world, but instead giving them a leg up. We can see that we are seeing sustained declines in both homicides and non-fatal shootings in the western district. At a city council hearing today, directors told council members that the city's western district has seen a 30 percent reduction in homicides since the program began, but critics have long complain that the program simply shifts criminals to other parts of the city. The Northeastern has seen a significant spike, a 101.9% spike over the last year, um, um, which is scary. Those involved in the program must pledge to stay clear of crime and in return the city provides life coaches, even financial assistance with paying rent or relocation costs to another neighborhood. And then there are stipends for every move they make away from crime. If you go um, and have a conversation with a referral partner, you'll get $25 for having a conversation. You completing um, the creation of your resume, you going on a, a job interview. There are um, dollar amounts that are assigned per stipend type. So far, the city has spent $200,000 helping those involved in violence. What happens to the guns? But Councilwoman Odette Ramos questioned whether the program was really getting guns off the streets. Someone comes out of their group, obviously still has a gun. How does this work? Because I don't want that gun to be, go right back on the street. Guns are going to remain within groups and even potentially within the individuals that we are providing services for. Council members questioned whether the city can afford to expand the program into other areas of the city. For now, the verdict is still out. We, we still have a, a pretty good ways to go. In a city where the violence is still on. Folks feel a desperate sense of urgency. So far, the city has funded this program with funds from the federal government's American Rescue Plan. Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Well, Johns Hopkins University is warning students and staff about an increase in crime on two of its campuses. The university says seven armed robberies happened over a three week period in October. Now, the warning comes amid pushback from the community over the university's plan to have its own private police force. Some community members have been outspoken against those plans because of concerns of over policing. Those who support the plan point to Baltimore police being short by some 400 officers, something the police department addressed at City Hall. Patrol staffing this year compared to, compared to last year is 55 less officers um, out on the streets and patrol. Fox 45 News asked Baltimore City Police about the increase in crime around the university. They did not answer that question, but they did tell us BPD has a robbery initiative in the area, which includes directed patrol of both foot and bicycle units. Now, across Baltimore, businesses and communities are hiring their own security guards as BPD continues to struggle with that police shortage. In the past week, we have seen confrontations between some of those security guards and residents that have led to shootings. So tonight, we're looking at the clearance process these security guards go through and what they face on the streets of Baltimore. Well, if you want to be a security guard in Maryland, you must get your certification from Maryland State Police, but not your training. And tonight, a closer look at training for security guards. A shooting at the Royal Farms convenience store on Washington Boulevard in southwest Baltimore. Tanisha Spence, a security guard, charged now with attempted murder and other charges after police say she shot a man in the head. This is the second time a security guard 
has been involved in a shooting in less than two weeks. On October 21st, police say a security guard at the CVS in Harbor East shot a suspected shoplifter in the face. Investigators say the victim tried to stab the guard with a syringe. The security guard not charged in that case. Both incidents. I think it varies depending on the employer. Calling attention to security guards and the training required to land a job. Mark Tobias. Probably security guards are at a premium in Baltimore. Is a security expert and attorney with Security Labs. The Pittsburgh based business provides consulting work for law companies worldwide. Tobias observing now what's happening in Baltimore with shootings involving security guards. I'd be willing to bet that a lot of them have minimal requirements. Some of these guys are former law enforcement. That's fine you know, with state certification. But, you know, I think a lot of them now are 10, $15 an hour guards that I wouldn't put any faith in. Tobias knows nothing about Spence's qualifications or anything about the training received by the CVS security guard. But according to security guard training headquarters, an online resource site, basic requirements to be an armed security guard in Maryland include you must be at least 21 years old, pass a criminal background check, and submit to fingerprinting, and approved certification from Maryland State Police. The hiring company is responsible for training. The requirements ought to be that they understand the laws of arrest, of detaining, and they understand when they can use lethal force. Well, according to court records, Spence remains behind bars held without bail. She's due in court for a hearing December 1st. Reporting tonight, Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. Well, Fox 45 News has been pressing leaders in Baltimore for answers to questions about what will make the city a safer place to live. Today, Fox 45 News' Mackenzie Frost took some viewer concerns right to Mayor Scott about trust. We routinely hear from people all across the city that crime just doesn't seem to be getting better. One of the big problems facing leaders right now are what to do about the squeegee kids. Mayor Brandon Scott says he's looking forward to Ivan Bates becoming the next state's attorney, but as it stands right now, the two leaders don't seem to be on the same page about how to handle that big problem, despite what Mayor Brandon Scott says. Crime in Baltimore, front and center of the conversation, especially as Ivan Bates prepares to take over as the state's attorney. Getting a handle on crime, top priority for voters, but who can do it remains a question. In July, 70% of voters rejected state's attorney Marilyn Mosby and her policies, likely putting Ivan Bates in the seat after November. And according to an informal poll, Fox 45 News viewers overwhelmingly think Bates is best fit for the job. Wednesday, we pressed the mayor on Fox 45's viewers' confidence. 96% of our viewers said that they trust Ivan Bates to get a handle on the public safety problem over you. Uh, we saw the campaign promise that you made on the campaign trail when you were running for mayor broken to reduce crime by 15 or homicides by 15 percent. Why should the people of Baltimore trust you to get a handle on this? Well, they should trust both of us. There is no division between uh, State's Attorney Bates and I. Scott tying himself to Bates, putting a united front forward to help release the grip violent crime has had on Baltimore for years. But one of the biggest issues in Charm City right now can be seen in broad daylight. Squeegee kids standing on the street corners up and down some of Baltimore's busiest streets and Bates and Scott seem to be split on how to handle it. They can't be there. But what we're not going to do is what you and some other folks are insisting that we do and that's saying if you're black and outside you should be moved. When you talk about you and Ivan Bates being, being on the same page, especially when we're talking about the conversation this week about squeegee kids, you said that you guys are on the same page but that's not what public statements are saying. So are conversations happening well, behind public, the scenes? Public statements are what you guys say. I know what Ivan said to me and what he said to him and, that, and what I said to him. That's all that matters. Scott moving on from the question, but his comments now come after Tuesday when he was quick to quip about the growing divide. But your office also says that when we see the recommendations, it'll focus on the constitutionality of enforcement around these laws. Ivan Bates says that he disagrees with Again, the law enforcement. No, he doesn't. He Ivan Bates, me, I spoke with Ivan Bates directly. What you I say? Too. So while the mayor says he and Bates are on the same page, public statements tell a different story. Does that mean you disagree with the mayor's law department's interpretation of the law, that what they're doing is 
protected free speech because they say that that's panhandling. I understand, however, on the law, I disagree. To me, there's a difference with panhandling holding a sign very quietly in a area, not going in and out of traffic. And the people of Baltimore are looking to Bates to help stop the bloodshed on display again Tuesday night. <laughs> where police lights light up the night and evidence markers indicate the scene of another life forever impacted by Baltimore's crime crisis. The mayor touting some statistics saying that gun seizures and gun related arrests are up compared to this time last year. But we also know that homicides and non fatal shootings are still higher than where we were in 2021 and Baltimore City continues to be on pace to surpass 300 homicides for the eighth straight year in Baltimore. Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. And that brings us to our question of the day. Who do you trust to solve the city's public safety problem? Incoming state's attorney Ivan Bates or Mayor Brandon Scott? So far, 97% of those who voted say Ivan Bates. We want to know what you think. Go to foxbaltimore.com and click on the Pulse tab to make your voice heard.